Here it goes. Bam! That's a PS2 running Doom. You're probably wondering how the hell I got Doom running on my PS2. If you watch my channel, you know that I love PS2 Model 25s. The one on the right here is my NEC V38 MHz model, and the one on the left is my 286 model, which is actually pretty rare. I really like the form factor of these machines, and having the most powerful version of a PS2 Model 25 sounded pretty appealing to me. Some browsing on the Walsh Computing website, which is an invaluable resource for PS2 owners, showed me exactly what I wanted, a Kingston SX Now upgrade. And retro ads with vaporwave art in old copies of PC Magazine really got me hyped for the purchase. And after waiting for several months, one of them finally popped up on eBay, complete in the package and possibly never used. The upgrade itself is pretty easy. It consists of a pop-in daughter card that replaces your original 286 chip with this brand spanking new 386SX25 processor. So after popping it in, I was ready to rattle some windows. And by rattling windows, I actually mean run some old school gaming benchmarks. I started out with Wolfenstein 3D Benchmark, which is a pretty handy utility that somebody came up with a couple years ago. This benchmark basically just runs through a demo level of Wolfenstein 3D and then kind of keeps track of your average frame per second. It's not exactly as thorough as some other tests, but I like these sort of benchmarks because they're directly gaming related, which is the main thing I use my PS2 Model 25 for. The second benchmarking utility that I ran was Superscape Reality's 3D Bench, which you've probably seen on my channel before. Now, it might not seem much to some of you guys, but I remember a point in my life watching this thinking it was the most awesome virtual reality demo ever made. The aesthetic kind of reminds me of the hacking sequence from the original Weird Science movie, and I was pretty impressed with my results. I got about a 73% increase in performance with both benchmark utilities. Have you ever heard the phrase, when it rains it pours? Well, it poured SX Now upgrades on eBay about two days after I had installed this 25 megahertz one, and the top of the line 33 megahertz model popped up for a very reasonable price. Having spent a little bit more than I wanted to on obsolete processor upgrades, I decided to take the more rare version of the complete boxed one and stick it back on eBay to offset the cost I spent on the 33 megahertz version. It yielded about a 25% increase in performance over the 25 megahertz version for 3D Bench and about a 1% improvement for Wolf 3D, which wasn't really much. I suspected that the PS2 Model 25's onboard VGA graphic system might be holding the processor upgrade back, so I tested my theory and it proved to be true. Installing an external graphics card yielded me a huge increase in performance. Now keep this in mind you Model 30 owners who are probably going to use an external graphics card anyway. I got closer to a 200% increase in performance with both benchmark utilities when I used my external STB Nitro ISA video card. Now here comes the negative part. Now this is an SX upgrade, which means it allows you to run protected mode 386 software. Sounds cool, right? Well, 386SX processors aren't anything like 386DX processors. They're basically 286s that can run 386 instructions. Thanks to the higher clock speed, my performance for 286 games and programs has increased pretty dramatically, but anything that I could run now specifically because it has an SX processor is very slow. You'll notice how long it's actually taking for this thing to load Doom, and then once it gets started it's going to be Slideshow City. I tried this out on a couple of other DOS programs that needed 4 megs of RAM and an SX processor as a minimum, and they all pretty much had the same results. Warcraft 1 was pretty much unplayable. And here's the laughably slow gameplay of Doom. Check out those frames per minute. If you turn the screen down to its minimum size, you can get it to an almost playable frame rate. And sadly, I probably would have actually played it like this when I was younger because I didn't really have a nice computer when Doom first came out. Is the upgrade worth it? That's the question. Well, a lot like the magazine articles and the segment from Walsh Computing that I read, I would say that it's not worth it if you're looking for a 386 class machine. However, if you're looking to bring the performance level of your PS2 Model 25 or 30 286 up to that which is reasonable for a VGA class 286 machine, I would say it's definitely worth it. Please give me a like if you enjoyed my video. Also subscribe if you want to follow along with my projects.